Hi everyone, it's uh, Marie from Touchy Soap and today it's going to be goat milk soap. So I've got my goat milk here and it's uh, frozen in, in uh, ice cubes. So I do that of course ahead of time and then when I need to make it I just weigh out the different um, amount of goat milk that I need. So put the ice, ice cubes or the goat milk cubes in here and uh, if I need a little bit more, I'll mush up one ice cube and I'll just add parts of it up to the weight that I need. I then put it in a bucket of cold water. And in fact, every time I make soap, even if I use water uh, as my diluent, I always put it in, uh, in a bucket of water. It keeps it cool and then if there's any spill, it's contained and if the if the lye spills outside, then it's diluted in the water, so it's not as um, as caustic. So, anyways, here we go. We've got the our goat milk nicely frozen, and I add my lye very 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 slowly, just a little bit at a time. A little bit on there, and then I mix it around. So, goat milk actually. You have to have a bit of patience with it. It's not something that you can do when you're rushed. And the reason that we freeze the goat milk, or any of the other milk, you can make coconut milk, buttermilk, dairy milk, any milk, um, it prevents it from getting too hot and getting burned. Because milk contains sugars, and when you burn sugar, it goes brown. It caram caramelizes. And some people don't mind a brown color to their soap, but usually when I think goat milk, I think white. And when I think goat milk soap, I think white soap. So I like to prevent my soap from going uh, darker. So I just um, freeze the milk, add the lye slowly, and um, just take my time. And eventually the lye will start to uh, melt the milk and it will get dissolved. We'll add a little bit more. Usually when I do this I'll put a bit of lye in here, mix it around, let it dissolve, then I'll go and weigh my oils and I'll go and do my other preparations um, while well, this is going on, but for the sake of the video, I decided to get everything else prepared ahead of time so I could just sit here and mix and stir and chat. My goat milk recipe is very, 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 very simple. Olive oil, coconut oil, goat milk. That's it. And then, of course, I add um, my fragrance. And today I'm going to use uh, lavender. You can see the milk is starting to melt quite nicely. I'll put some more lye in here. And if I've learned anything, it's patience. Soap, the best thing to have is patience. Now you'll find that usually soap will, uh, soap, blah, the milk will sometimes go uh, a little bit yellow. Sometimes it might even go orange. If you're adding the lye more quickly than I'm, I'm doing now, um, your, your milk may go orange. Um, that usually doesn't last, but um, I like to take my time and just try to keep it as light as I can. You may also notice um, a kind of an ammonia odor that comes out of the milk. That sometimes happens. And that's normal. It smells bad, but it doesn't stay. It doesn't stay in the soap, so it's uh, it dissipates quite uh, quite rapidly. So that's nothing to be alarmed. So, all right. Once I'm done with my empty cup, I just put it in the water. There you go. No spills, no muss, no fuss. Actually, my milk is still a nice, nice white color. It didn't even go the yellow. 
Fancy that. Now sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to determine that your if your lie is totally dissolved because you can't see, of course, because the, the mil milk is opaque. But if you run your spatula on the bottom of your um, container, you can sometimes feel a rough or sandy-like um, texture, feel a, like a rough texture on the bottom, or you, sometimes you can even hear it go clunch, 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 so then you know that there's still lie on the bottom of your cup, and it's not fully dissolved. But this one looks, looks fine. Okay, let's take a temperature on this just to see where we're at. And we're at 95. So let's, let's do that again. Yep, 95.1. So it's a little bit warmer than sometimes I have it. It depends on, the, on the, the temperature of the water. Some people like to have it a lot cooler and they'll actually put this in ice. But I find usually just as long as it's less than 100 degrees, I'm not unhappy. Okay, so we'll take this out of our water bath. Here, we'll take this away. And so this is my oil. Okay, like I said, this is very, very simple. It's olive oil and coconut oil. And I am actually going to put my titanium dioxide right in here. I want to have my soap fairly liquidy to pour into my mold because I want to do a little design on top. And usually my, uh, my recipe does trace fairly quickly, especially with the fragrance oil. So I'm going to do the titanium dioxide right off the bat, right in here. And I don't know if this is going to work, because guess what? It's a water-soluble titanium dioxide that I have in glycerin. So I am going to try, actually, before I do that, I'm going to do, I found these little plastic um, uh, placemats, so it's a lot better than just the old craft paper I used to put down. So we're going to put this in here, and we're just going to give it a bit of a mix, and see what that does, and then we'll add the lye. And maybe it'll work out, and maybe it won't. But, like I said, experimentation is sometimes... Ooh, that's ugly. <laughs> Eey, yucky. All right, we'll stick blend it a little bit. That may help it along. Look at that. Look at all these little bubbles. Not the funniest thing. Okay. Okay, I've got a new stick blender. Well, it's not a new stick blender. It's my other one that I don't normally use. It's a bit more powerful than my other one, but as you may know, the other one that I was using was such a noisy thing that um, I thought I'll use this one. Okay. Well, there you go. Titanium dioxide kind of dispersed quite nicely. Who would have thought? <laughs> Marie, you twit! <laughs> okay, give me a moment. Okay, so you may notice that some people will um, push their um, or will will um, strain their lye solution. And that's because the milk, depending on what kind of milk you're using, um, milk has different amounts of fat in it. Some have more, some have less. 
and the fat in the milk will actually start to saponify when you mix it with the lye and sometimes it will clump. So straining it is usually not a bad idea. And it's a very fine strainer that I'm using so it's not very fast but it is going through. And you can just work it um, with the spatula. And I was telling you about the ammonia odor, and that's, I can actually faintly smell it. I should probably use a bigger strainer. However, I have a bigger strainer, but the um, the mesh is so large that I mean, you might as well not strain it. It just goes right through. Now there are some people who actually choose not to strain the um, their milk, and um, even if there are small little lumps of uh, saponified uh, milk fat, um, they'll just mix it thoroughly inside the soap, and actually sometimes you can't even tell. So you're probably starting to get the idea that, yeah, mil goat milk soap or any type of milk soap, they do take a little bit longer to um, to do. You see, this is what you're left with, and I mean, yes, you do end up getting a little bit less lye available to actually make your, your soap because you do use up a little bit with this, but. Um, it doesn't really affect the soap. It just means that you'll have a little bit less um, uh, or a little bit more unsaponified oil. So your 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 super fat might be a little bit more than um, originally calculated. But that's no, that's okay. It's always better to have a little bit less lye than to have too much. There we go. There we go. I think we're done. Okay. Just gonna take my lye solution bowl over there. Okay. So we're going to whiz this a little bit. Try not to make a mess this time. going to add our fragrance. As I said, I was, I'm using lavender. It's very nice.
goat milk soap, um, if you don't gel it, it won't get it won't get hot and it won't uh, darken in color. But even if you if even if you don't gel it and when you unmold it, it'll be quite white. Over time, it will slightly go a little bit darker. I found like a tan color or a dark beige, and that's just what it does. So I put titanium dioxide in this one because I just I don't want it to go darker. I want it to keep stay fairly white. Hi. So here we are with the finished product. I apologize. My camera stopped recording yesterday right when I was finishing um, making the batter. So you didn't see me pour the batter into the mold or do the little decoration, which is supposed to look like a heart, but actually looks more like a manta ray <laughs> or some sort. But um, after I poured these and did the decoration, I put them in the fridge. I didn't put any isopropyl alcohol on them because I didn't want the um, smell of the alcohol to go on the food on the fridge. Uh, so I didn't cover them and left them in the fridge overnight. Took them out in the morning, put them out on the counter just to, to, to sit. And now we're going to take them out of the mold. And usually I test them, I just pull aside or pull away the sides of the mold. And if they come out quite cleanly from the soap, then I know they're fine to take out. If there's a little bit of resistance or it pulls or tugs um, at the soap, then I'll usually leave them an extra day uh, to sit and get harder. So here we go. And they just pop right out. There we are. Little hearts. So it's not get a little bit soft still, but um, they will harden up more as time goes. And there we go. So here are my little goat milk heart shaped soaps. There we go. Thanks for watching.